All right, I guess uh, go ahead and get started. Um, so the talk's off the uh, repository priorities for the real world re user. Um, so I guess my motivation for uh, making this talk is seeing uh, people in IRC and uh, some of the other support channels have issues um, that I believe could be resolved by using priorities on repositories. So first let's go over the goals, uh, what we're hoping to accomplish with this talk. So I want to cover why you might actually add um, extra repositories beyond the default ones, uh, some of the pitfalls you can run into when using different types of repositories without priorities, and how you can avoid those issues by using priorities. So first of all, let's take a look at uh, why you might add repositories. Um, so the first one, which I think is probably the most common one, is you want packages compiled with different or additional features, um, something like Pac-Man or something like that. Um, another one being you want packages that are not available already in one of the main product repositories. So you might add a develop project or someone's own project. Um, otherwise you might add four pre-release packages, um, either again in develop project or uh, somewhere else. Or you may be maintaining packages and you want to easily install them on your machine after you build them on OBS um, to try them out. So there's some reasons why you might add repositories. So let's take a look at a fresh install and we'll go through the um, first reason and kind of cover what I imagine a lot of people already do. So let's go ahead and add um, Pac-Man repository on default install. So hopefully you're familiar with adding a repository um, with Zipper. Um, and then another uh, next step being to dump from that package or the repository which would switch all your packages to Pac-Man. And then an example here of trying to install Blender which I believe shouldn't be in the default install. So then the question arises, where does Blender come from? Because it's in both Pac-Man and it's in the uh, main product repository. So does it come from Tumbleweed or Pac-Man? And the answer is um, not necessarily obvious. So basically here's an example where we have, um, these are real versions I pulled from um, those two repositories. So you can see a big long version string. So in this case it would come from Pac-Man because the uh, build number is larger. So basically it's always looking for overall larger number. So let's say that we had a new release of Blender that hits Tumbleweed. It hasn't yet propagated to Pac-Man yet. So if you were to be installing and you happen to hit this scenario, you would have the 3.0 version in Tumbleweed and not in Pac-Man. So in this case, it would come from Tumbleweed. So there's no clear rhyme or reason. So it's kind of, do you feel lucky? Where is it going to come from? You can obviously check this um, yourself manually, but generally you usually add repositories with a reason in mind. Um, so let's talk about when we're dumping with allow vendor change, which is when a lot of this comes from. So this used to be the um, default behavior that would come out of the box, um, but it would mean that if you added something like Pac-Man, depending on when you decided to update your machine and the state of Pac-Man and the product repository, the packages might flip-flop because of those build revision numbers or the um, versions of the packages themselves. And that can cause a lot of problems. You could actually have weird splits of packages from both repositories. Um, going forward, that's been disabled, so the default now is uh, to not allow vendor change by default, which prevents the flip-flop, but you don't necessarily resolve the question of where does the package come from um, if I don't manually pick it. Uh, this is obviously further aggravated if you add more things besides just something like Pac-Man, if you add develop projects or your own repositories, a lot of times those um, repositories will have different versions of the same packages, which means that package will be available in multiple sources and you you'll have to make a decision as to where it comes from. So the question is, can we communicate why are we adding a repository um, to Zipper in such a way that it would make the right choice as to where to take the package from? And the answer is yes, we can use repository priorities. So priorities allow us to specify an order of uh, precedence for the repositories, which means um, which one to basically use over the other ones when they both have the same package. Um, so by doing this, we eliminate the flip-flop because we'll basically always use uh, whichever repository has the higher precedence. Which also gives us consistent package sourcing because if we know that a package is in multiple repositories, it always comes from whichever one we have the higher priority. So again, it doesn't switch and it picks from the same place. This also nicely documents on your own machine um, kind of what your reasoning was for adding repositories because a lot of times they can be there for a long time and you, you may forget. So um, helps with that. And as we'll cover more, it nicely um, allows kind of a hands-free um, switching to the product repository when packages become stable. So I'll go through that example some more. So how to use zipper repository priorities? Um, you can either set them when you add repository or when you add a repository, uh, the example there, 
or you can modify them after the fact. Um, so in case you're not familiar, the default priority is 99. Lower is more important, higher is less important. So basically a 1 would always win over a 99. Um, so it's an ascending order of importance. So here's an example of what your default setup might look like on Tumbleweed, where you basically have the, the three main repositories all uh, enabled with default priority of 99. So now let's go ahead and we'll revisit our Pac-Man scenario where we add Pac-Man, but this time we'll add it with a priority of 90, so that being more important than the default packages, which is typically why you would add Pac-Man, since you want it to replace um, packages with those compiled with additional features. So now we don't actually have to specify to dump from Pac-Man. We can just say dump in general because it will go ahead and pick any packages that come from both from Pac-Man because we told it it's a higher priority. So here again is the example of installing a package that wouldn't exist in the first place, so Blender. So then we have the question again of where does it come from? But this time it's easy to answer. It comes from Pac-Man because we added that with a higher priority. So again, we'll take a look at the example where I gave you where they're in Flux, where there was an update in Tumbleweed that hasn't yet propagated to Pac-Man. So in this case, the version number is clearly larger for Tumbleweed than it is in Pac-Man. But again, it will come from Pac-Man regardless, which is actually what we want. So there's no flip-flop and uh, clearly go through it. So next I'll cover a case study that I uh, had personally, which was using KDE Connect. So it was not yet in the uh, official repositories when I started using it. Um, so I actually added, I had already the KDE Extra repository and I added the KDE Extra Unstable. So you'll see I added them with uh, priorities of 105 and 106, so those being less important than the default priorities, which means I basically only want to use them for packages that uh, aren't in the main product repositories. So I would go ahead and install um, KD Connect in that case. And in the, initially it came from the unstable repository because the uh, KD maintainers only had it there since it had no official releases. Some months later it uh, had uh, pre-release candidates. So the package was moved into the KDX repository and nicely automatically for me when I went to dump my machine, there was a change uh, in repositories to that one. I didn't have to do anything, but I basically got the more stable one. Obviously you might want to continue using the nightly builds, but um, normally that's not what I want. And then a few months later, I had official stable releases, so when I dumped then, it automatically switched to the standard repository. So to review, um, basically we can automatically switch to using the main product repos without having to do anything. So again, this took like five months or something to occur. Um, nothing I had to manage. I just noticed it when I went to dump, which was kind of nice. Everything's dealt with for you. And it also means that we can add lots of extra repositories. So in fact, you could just about add all the repositories on OBS with lower priorities, and in, in theory they wouldn't completely hose your machine because you wouldn't use anything from them if it didn't come, if it was already in the, the main product repos. So that's kind of nice. So let's bring it all together. How do we actually make use of all this? So the key here is that we want to always dump with a lot of vendor change, and we want to have priorities set on all our repos. So if you don't have priorities set, then obviously dumping with a lot of vendor change can have undesirable effects. So these are the ways that you can uh, up with that, either whenever you run the command or you can change the config. Um, and this basically gives us everything that we want. So we automatically utilize new packages when they're added to Pac-Man. Um, so if there's some package like Blender that um, comes out with new feature and it can only be compiled in Pac-Man, then we automatically switch to that. Um, and when they're dropped, everything behaves basically the way you want. And extra, pa extra repos, the ones with lower priority, are basically only utilized when you have to. So let's review the reasons why we might add repositories again here and basically assign them priorities. These are priorities I use. The key here is more or less important than the defaults. Um, I generally leave space, so I basically increment by five. That way, if I have interesting cases that need to fit in the middle, I can do that. So for example, compiled with additional or different features, that would be Pac-Man, so I would add it with priority of 90, so it would be more important. Um, a repository that contains extra packages, 105, so that was like the KD extra ones. And then, uh, again, pre-release or things you want to test yourself that are higher priority than the defaults, but I don't generally want to override Pac-Man in this case, but you might. So for example, this is what my desktop looked like before uh, this presentation. Um, obviously I have a lot of other repositories, but basically just there. So if you run list repositories with uh, the P option, you get them sorted by priority, which is nice. So that's, that goes back to that documenting why you might have added these. So for example, the network and open age repositories I added because I wanted a package out of those that wasn't available in the main product, which is why they are lower priority. So again, it's very easy to tell when you look at that list. 
Of course, the standard uh, caveats apply. Um, if you're installing things from the extra re additional repos, they may or may not work. Um, obviously, things in developed projects are in flux, so packages may be broken, and you know, zipper priorities doesn't protect you from things that are broken. So, um, so as always, look at the uh, dup output, make sure that it's a sane proposal. And that's the basic idea. So from personal use, um, before the changes to allow um, vendor change where on all that was changed in, in uh, Tumbleweed, this resolved issues with Pac-Man and other things like that. So I, I used to have issues where you would have to resolve um, package problems when, when you have lots of repositories like that. And I haven't had issues since doing this several years. So any uh, questions or comments? All right, then uh, I guess that's it. So thank you.